Welcome back to TPS. Being an NFL kicker isn't as physically demanding as the other football positions, but aside from the quarterbacks, no player is consistently under more pressure than the kicker. Make a routine field goal and you're a hero, miss it and you're the scapegoat. Missing two field goal attempts in one game is considered bad, but missing three or more could very well have you looking for a new job come Monday. Let's count down the 10 most embarrassing kicker performances of all time. At TPS, we post videos every single day, so don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. But first, a quick look at a couple of honorable mentions. Jim Back in Week 14, 1966. A four-time pro bowler who was named to the NFL's 1960s and 70s all-decade team as St. Louis Cardinals faced the Atlanta Falcons in Week 14 of the 1966 season. That loss saw Back in miss six of seven field goal attempts. Fred Steinfort, Week 1, 1981 Although his Denver Broncos actually emerged victorious over the Oakland Raiders, despite one atrocious kicking performance, Steinfort attempted six field goals in the game. He only made one of them. It was a tough season overall for him, who only made 17 of 30 field goal attempts. On the bright side, he made 36 of 37 extra point attempts. Number 10, Daniel Carlson, Week 2, 2018 Perhaps no NFL team has a more painful history when it comes to kickers than the Minnesota Vikings. Think of Gary Anderson in the 1998 NFC Championship game or Blair Walsh in the 2015 NFC wildcard round. Even though Kai Forbath served as a reliable kicker for the Vikings in 2017, the team curiously went with rookie Daniel Carlson at the start of the 2018 season. It didn't take head coach Mike Zimmer long to regret that decision. The Vikings visited the Green Bay Packers in Week 2 of the 2018 season, and Minnie's ongoing problems at kicker reared its ugly head again. Carlson missed a 48-yard field goal in the second quarter, but that was the start of his brutal day. The game went to overtime, and Minnesota started with the ball. Carlson missed a 49-yarder that would have put the Vikings ahead. And he missed it again! Unfortunately, the Vikings forced a Green Bay punt on the ensuing possession, and that gave Carlson another chance to play hero. This time, Carlson was set up with a much more manageable 35-yarder, which he also missed. He missed it again! The game ended in a 29-29 tie, and Carlson wound up losing his starting job as the Vikings waived him and signed Dan Bailey as a replacement. Number 9, Nick Folk, Week 5, 2017 The Buccaneers had a chance to make a statement on Thursday night football against Tom Brady's New England Patriots. The defending Super Bowl champions limped to a 2-2 two two start on the basis of a woeful defense, and the football world was starting to hold out hope that the dynasty was over. The Bucs went up pushed New England to an ugly, uncharacteristic 2-3 start, but it didn't come to be, mainly because Bucs kicker Nick Folk entered a bad day at the office. Folk missed a 56-yard field goal on the final play of the first half to keep the Tampa Bay deficit at 6 points. Fair enough, 50-something yarders outdoors are no easy task. But Folk also missed a 49-yard field goal in the fourth quarter, which cost Tampa Bay the chance to make it a one-possession game. And while that's no easy kick either, Folk wasn't even close. Folk, who missed from 56 in this direction at the end of the first half. This kick is Tim. wide left. Then the Bucks pieced together a good drive and set up Folk for the shot at redemption, a 31-yarder with five and a half minutes to go. And you can guess what happened next. Oh. And no, they don't. Oh, my goodness. Tampa Bay wound up losing 19-14, to so folks missed field goals were kind of the difference here. Number 8, Doug Bryant, 2004 AFC Divisional Round Doug Bryant played for the New York Jets in their 2004 AFC wildcard game against the San Diego Chargers, kicking a game-winning field goal in overtime to complete the stunning upset. One week later, Bryant had another chance to play hero twice, and he failed both times. The Jets met the top seed at 15 win Pittsburgh Steelers, led by rookie Ben Roethlisberger in the divisional round. This defensive affair was tied 17 apiece in the waning minutes, but it looked like New York had another major upset in them. The Jets set up Bryant for a 47-yard field goal attempt with two minutes to go, but he dinged it right off the crossbar. Is it long enough? No, it hit the crossbar! On the next play, Roethlisberger was picked off by David Barrett, who returned it to the Steelers' 27-yard line. New York mounted the clock and gave Bryant another chance to win it, this time with a 43-yard field goal attempt. He missed it! 
The Jets got the ball first in overtime, but they were forced to punt. The Steelers drove into the Jets' territory and won the game on a Jeff Reed 33-yard field goal. Brian finished with a solid career field goal percentage of 80.2, but he picked the worst possible time to miss two big-time clutch kicks. Number 7. Nate Kading, 2009 AFC Divisional Round In the regular season, Nate Kading was more than reliable for the San Diego Chargers. The playoffs, unfortunately, were a completely different story. He missed a 40-yard game-winning field goal attempt in overtime with a 2004 AFC wildcard round against the Jets. Two years later, he missed a game-tying field goal attempt in the winning seconds of the divisional round against the Patriots. Kading's playoff kicking woes would continue in the Chargers' 2009 divisional round tilt against the massive underdog Jets at home. Kading missed a 36-yarder in the first quarter, a 57-yarder at the end of the first half, and a much-needed 40-yarder with less than five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Play of the drive, they're settling for a field goal. Would you believe Nate Kading? Oh, no. 69 miss. Not the type of hat trick a kicker aspires for. I mean, he's not going to miss three. He missed the third one. The Jets pulled off the big upset, 17-14. All Kading needed was two of those field goals, and the Chargers would have been headed to the AFC Championship game. Number 6, Dan Carpenter, Week 15, 2010. The Dolphins desperately needed a win against the Buffalo Bills in Week 15 of the 2010 season in order to keep their oh-so-slim playoff hopes alive. Unfortunately, kicker Dan Carpenter turned in the worst performance of his career on the worst possible day. Carpenter missed a 48-yarder on the Dolphins' opening drive. Then he missed a much more forgivable 61-yard attempt on the final play of the first half. At that point, he's probably thinking that he could only improve from that point on, right? Wrong. Carpenter also missed a 53-yarder late in the third quarter and a game-tying 48-yard attempt after the two-minute warning. He won four plays later, fourth and nine, setting up for a field goal to tie it, and Dan Carpenter... Dolphins lost 17-14 to and basically saw their playoff hopes unravel, due in large part to Carpenter's awful day. Number 5, Jay Feely, Week 12, 2005. The New York Giants squared off against the NFC's top team, the Seattle Seahawks, in Week 12 of the 2005 season. The 12th man didn't seem to affect the second-year quarterback, Eli Manning, and the underdog Giants, who kept pace with the high-powered Seahawks. The Giants forced a Seattle punt with a minute and a half to go, and the game was even at 21 apiece. Eli pieced together a solid drive and put kicker Jay Feely in position to win the game on a 40-yard attempt. Oops. However, Jay Feely missed wide on a 40-yard field goal attempt, and the game went into overtime. Not to fear, the Giants forced a punt on the first possession of overtime and had another chance to win. This time, Feely got to attempt a 54-yarder, which he also missed. Over time, Feely would get a chance at redemption. However, he would again miss. Two drives later, he missed another potential game-winning field goal attempt, this time from 45 yards out. However, Feely would miss for the third time, coming up short on a 45. Three chances wasn't enough for Feely, and the Seahawks would finally win the game on a Josh Brown 36-yarder. Number 4, Steven Gostowski, Week 1, 2020. The Tennessee Titans signed three-time Super Bowl champion and former Patriots Super Bowl reliable kicker Steven Gostowski ahead of the 2020 offseason. Let's just say that Gostowski, who was statistically speaking one of the most accurate kickers of all time, took some time to find his footing in Tennessee. He delivered one down right off on a forgettable performance against the Denver Broncos in Week 1 on Monday Night Football. He missed attempts from 47 and 42 yards. Kicking game was a mess a season ago. Here's Guskowski on the way from four. He had a 44-yard attempt blocked. This one had one block and no go. And he missed an extra point in the fourth quarter. A bit of a low snap there. Funny thing is, he still wound up playing the hero by kicking the game-winning 25-yard field goal with just 17 seconds left. But it wouldn't have come down to that last kick had he just made one or two earlier. Number 3, Cody Parkey, Week 10, 2018 Let's just call this one a doink fest. Even though the Chicago Bears defeated the Detroit Lions 34-22 at Soldier Field in Week 10 of the 2018 season, it was hard for kicker Cody Parkey to celebrate after the game. He simply had a performance like no other kicker could imagine. Park hit the upright on his first extra point attempt of the game. Cody Parkey hits the upright. Following an Anthony Miller touchdown reception from Mitch Trubisky in the second quarter, Parkey came out for another extra point. Not given anymore. And the extra point. That was only half of the story. Parkey hit the upright a third time on a 41-yard field goal attempt in the third quarter. 41 yards away, and that. Just a few minutes later, Parkey hit the upright again, this time on an easier 34-yard attempt. Toward the upright. Unbelievable. Can you believe 
Is it a bad time to mention that the 2018 Bears season ended when Parky hit the left upright a 43-yard attempt in the wild card round against the Philadelphia Eagles? It was just that type of year for Parky. Number two, Neil O'Donoghue, Week 8, 1983. NFL kickers rarely get the chance to attempt a field goal more than once in overtime. Missing field goals in overtime has to be quite embarrassing. As for three misses in overtime, well, you really only get to see that once or twice in a lifetime. And our former St. Louis Cardinals kicker, Neil O'Donoghue. The Cardinals hosted the New York Giants in week eight of the 1983 season. This thrilling contest required overtime, thanks to O'Donoghue's game tying a field goal late in the fourth quarter. Arizona had three chances to win the game in overtime. First, O'Donoghue missed a 45-yarder in the extra frame. No way. Fortunately, the Cardinals got the ball back and gave him another chance to win, this time with a practical gimme kick from 20 yards out, but he missed that too. Giants quarterback Jeff Rutledge threw an interception the next play, giving the Cardinals and O'Donoghue one more shot to win it. But of course, O'Donoghue missed his third and final opportunity in overtime, this time from 42 yards out. And number one, Mason Crosby, Week 5, 2018. In an era where so many teams are going through multiple kickers each season, Mason Crosby has been one of the few reliable men at the position. He's been the Green Bay Packers kicker since 2007, and the dude has made so many clutch kicks throughout his stellar career. He's not exactly Adam Vinatieri reliable, but he's pretty close. But even the best of the absolute best still have their off days, and that includes Crosby. He had a day to forget against the Detroit Lions in Week 5 of the 2018 season, missing four of five field goal attempts and an extra point in a 31-23 loss. Good snap, good hold, and hooked to the left. The wide receivers aren't getting the job done. 42 yards. Hey, it happens. Nobody's perfect, and even the ultra-reliable Crosby was bound to have one rather forgettable day at the office at some point in his career. What other embarrassing kicker performances should we have included on our list? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. See, I kept it short. You already like, subscribe, hit the button, like the video. See you soon. Take care.